What is going on in the mind of the man who might be the Unabomber? Federal authorities say Theodore Kaczynski thinks and acts like the male bomb terrorist. Fox News reporter Niles Latham takes a look. Last week, 53-year-old Theodore Kaczynski emerged in the white-hot glow of the spotlight after 25 years in a wilderness of his own making. Unkempt, he held his head high, his gaze direct, not the usual sort of perp walk the country is accustomed to. And to the FBI agents who tracked and analyzed this case for 17 years, Kaczynski immediately fit the menacing profile of the Unabomber. He fits exactly what my image would be, uh, uh, with some exceptions. I didn't uh, picture him quite so far out in terms of isolation. I would have pictured him a little closer to a, to a uh, uh, center of, uh, population center. Dr. Richard Ault is a former behavior expert at the FBI who helped put together one of the original profiles of the Unabomber. He says Kaczynski's life story is reflected in the bitter diatribes against modern society contained in the Unabomber's published manifesto. Everything from the remote Montana cabin without electricity to his decision to quit a career in mathematics to descriptions of a shy but brilliant teenager who never had a friend or a lover all reflect the sense of profound alienation contained in the Unabomber's writings that often refer to the author as watching life while leaning on the rails. You can see it um, time and again in sort of this uh, struggle that the author, uh, who was unknown at the time, had with uh, um, the technology going on around him and in effect passing him by. And in Kaczynski there is also the fascination with explosives starting in high school when he played practical jokes on classmates with explosive devices in science class, allegedly graduating to bombs meticulously, almost lovingly crafted and mailed to victims of the Unabomber. With Unabomb, the bombs were very special to him, so he became more involved in making, or as, as, as involved in making the bombs as he was in what his mission was, you know, whatever that turned out to be. And underneath it all, there was the supreme arrogance of a man on a mission, a fanatical quest to kill and maim and frighten, all in the name of ridding society of technology. Such arrogance, experts say, is typical of political killers. They have decided that obviously there's a problem here and only they can resolve it. And once they set out on a course like Unabom set on, then they have to keep that arrogance and, and kind of beef it up. But the major unanswered question is why? Why did he drop out of society? And why was he filled with so much rage that he devoted his adult life to killing? That's an issue that experts say may remain a mystery to everyone, including Theodore Kaczynski. Niles Latham, Fox News, Washington. And joining us now in the studio are two experts in the field of criminal behavior. Tara Serkovich, a criminal psychologist formerly with the Justice Department, and forensic psychiatrist Dr. Ray Patterson. Thanks, both of you, for being with us. Dr. Patterson, let's start with you. Are you surprised that uh, Kaczynski may be the Unabomber? Is that the sort of person you thought would have uh, committed these crimes? Well, I think the uh, operative phrase is maybe. Yeah. And in my line of work, we tend not to get involved with any individual until they've been formally charged with an offense. And at this point, we're at the history-taking stage. Uh, I have the same kind of information that your viewing audience has, and therefore what we have are sound bites of various historical factors. To get into any individual's head and find out what they were thinking requires talking to that person. Uh, so until we get a chance to do that, then we really don't have a sense of how it all fits together. But the idea of profiling is the beforehand. Now it's the issue of taking a look at any individual who may be accused of a particular crime, in this case of bombings. Serial killers come in all forms and packages. They do things that they do for various reasons. So to try to get an idea of what is unique about this person, there are several historical factors. We've got 18 years, which is an unusually long period of time. We've got uh, an impersonal way of killing. Most serial killers are personalizing. They have contact with their victims. So in this instance, we have someone, whoever it may be, and in this case we have a suspect, but has not been formally charged again, um, who has done this long distance, has not had the personal touch, if you will, although there are certainly some very idiosyncratic ways of looking at this whole situation. Dr. Sirkovich, what's your thought? Were you surprised, or do you think uh, uh, Kaczynski sort of fits the sort of person you'd be well, looking for? I, I want to follow up on Dr. Patterson's uh, comment about the lack of personal touch, and I think that's the whole essence of this person. Um, his, the man's a mathematician. He's obviously brilliant. Uh, probably as a child he was, shall we say, ignored. 
underestimated. And I think he developed his intellectual capabilities as a way of dealing with the world and let his social capabilities kind of fizzle away. And I think after a while he got to see himself as sort of a messiah, uh, as a sort of a rescuer of the downtrodden, of the person who's going to right wrongs. And, uh, and people to him, just like numbers, they're an abstraction. You know, he doesn't relate to the social, emotional aspects of people. He relates to them as things to be manipulated. Uh, I, I, he relates to them conceptually rather than interpersonally. And so he goes off into the mountains and hides himself. And uh, he uses his skill now to do something practical about his, his uh, messiah fancy. He makes bombs. He's going to punish the wrongdoers. He's going to set the world right. He's going to publish a manifesto. Well, he has published a manifesto. Do you believe that the manifesto is indeed the real motivation here, his, his complaints about uh, technology, or is its motivation something else? Well, I think the individuals in behavioral science who do the profiling to try to get an idea of what kind of individual commits a certain kind of crime are really attempting to put together as much information as they have to lead to possibly identifying the perpetrator. In this kind of situation, that was very difficult for many years because there was not information associated with why this particular target, why this particular individual. A manifesto would be seen as a signature. Uh, for serial killers who do have that personal involvement, they may leave fingerprints, other evidence, other information. They may have a particular methodology of how they kill. In this instance, that was absent for years. So there was no way of actually putting together what is going on in this person's way of thinking. The manifesto gives you a real insight into whomever did this, what was in their head, what their issues may have been, industrialization, the downfall of society, et cetera. You wouldn't know that yeah. from anything else. Dr. Sergevich, do you think that was the real motivation, though, uh, that, that he, he had these quibbles with society, with technology? Again, those were the externals. The real quibble was uh, he knew he did not fit in. You know, yeah. He knew that to fit in, or his method is, is there a warning here about rushing the development of gifted kids that somehow, you know, when we get someone who's extraordinarily gifted, we rush him up the academic ladder, put him ahead a couple of grades, and then not ready? No, no I, don't. I think, you know, this, th that's a mythology, you know, about giftedness leading to insanity or leading to yeah. uh, wild acts. No. Uh, what, what caused the problem here? What do you think happened with Kaczynski, uh, so, whether he's guilty or not, he's a stranger? You know, again, I think he, he started out as somebody who was socially inept. And he focused his energy on intellectual development. I think he was probably constantly alienated. And nobody uh, tried to push the young man into more social, pro-social direction. We're, we're, we're out of time here, I'm sorry. One, one comment about your question about kids, because I yeah. think it's very important. All of us want our kids to do well. We want our kids to exceed, whether it's in academics or sports or whatever they do, we want them to do well. But they only get one chance to be kids. Let them be kids. Okay. Thanks, both of you, for being with us. You bet. Still ahead on Fox Morning News, former NFL player, now football analyst and novelist Tim Green on this year's draft and his new page turner. And football widows spend their Sundays with Natalie Dupree, the popular public TV cook, joins us for an all-veggie recipe later.